Sam O'Reilly runs a herd of around 800 cows in the Charing Cross area near Darfield. His calves have been just one part of his operation to suffer. Some of these were born Saturday morning. They got forgot. I sort of had to forget about them in the paddock for 48 hours. We just left them there on their mother. When the quake hit, his alarm to get him to milking had gone off. Family settled and down to the shed to find a large water tank collapsed and the staff on edge. The quake had also spooked his calves. They were very agitated. We still had some on the yard here. Yeah. And what weren't on the yard had turned around and bolted back to the paddock. Yeah. 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 And so when you started checking out your infrastructure, I guess, um, Power, water, were they off? Yeah, first things we thought about were power and water. Mm. Um, obviously power was off. We had uh, water leaking everywhere. Mm. So uh, they were the first two things we worried about. Yeah. Got on the phone, found a generator in town, a big generator. Um, that arrived reasonably early and we thought, oh good, we'll be able to get start, started milking again. Yeah. And then uh, we thought we'd better check on our platform and realise the damage that that had yeah. caused. So what had happened to the platform? The, the whole platform had, had slid off shifted shifted one way but nearly half a metre wow. and in places also sunk you know wow. three four hundred mils. Then it was on the phone to Donald Engineering way down at Edendale in Southland. They dropped everything and hit the road to Canterbury and arrived at 10 on the Saturday night. They got straight into it yeah and they worked through until um, it was operational really. Right. And so how long did it take them to well, we'd already, we'd already, as I said, we'd already jacked up the platform and got it level. Yeah. Um, and then we just had to shift it horizontally, yeah. 300 mils. So that night, yeah, that was our first job, was yeah. shifting it horizontally. Yeah. And that took about, um, took about four hours. Wow. Inch by, or mil, millimetre by millimetre. Yeah. It was a slow process. Yeah. So we did that, and um, then the engineers went about fixing all the rollers. Yeah and all the um, supports underneath the underneath the platform, right. which about a third of them had broken off or, right. or was severely bent. Yeah. So they had to put new new roller assemblies in, did yeah, they? they? Yeah, they fixed all them. Yeah. Um, and they finished about three o'clock in the morning. Right. And then my, my staff and myself, we came back about four o'clock yeah. and we started assembling all the plant again that we'd disconnected to, um, to, allow, to allow them to do their job. Yeah. So meantime you had about 400 cows which desperately need, needed milking. So how long had they gone without being milked? They went, they went 24 hours mm -hmm. and we milked 400 through one shed, through yeah. one neighbour, yeah. and then we milked another 400 through another neighbour. Right. So we had two, two cow sheds running that evening, right. Right. Saturday evening, um, just to, to get them milked yeah. and they were very uncomfortable. So I was going to ask you about, I mean it must be quite a painful thing for the, for the animals. They were very uncomfortable. They were yeah. squirting milk. They were, yeah, they, was, they didn't look nice. Yeah. A few kilometres away, Roger Mannering's state-of-the-art shed is only in its second season. But the quake is no respecter of technical modernity. His turntable has also come off its rails. Here's how it looked before the engineers got started. The roller assemblies on which the turntable rail sits had smashed into the concrete foundations. Like Sam's platform, it had fallen vertically and to the side. The platform moved sideways and dropped off the main rollers, um, which means it won't turn. So what we did, we jacked it back up got it back in place, right. removed the damaged rollers and repaired those. Yeah. And now we're um, fixing the uh, guide rollers right. back into position. It's extremely exacting work getting measurements accurate. There's a tolerance of only one millimetre from the side of the platform to the motor in the middle that drives it. Their job had not been made any easier the day we arrived. Overnight, thieves had smashed their way into their truck, managed to open a back compartment and stolen all their electrical gear. Replacements had to be rushed up from Winchester and South Canterbury, a delay this farmer doesn't need as he milks his cows at another shed. But over at Sam's, spirits were not so mean. He was overwhelmed with help to get his shed up and running and save his cows the long plod along kilometres of country roads to be milked at his other shed. 
we had an amazing amount of help. Yeah. We had uh, people that came down from the North Island, people that drove up from uh, from Otago, wow. students from Christchurch come out, um, contractors, engineers, um, you know, everyone sort of, everyone pitched in, the owners, yeah. everyone pitched in to, to get it up and running. And we, we had over 50 people here really? over the weekend. Really? That we had uh, grandmothers feeding and, and uh, yeah, we were working flat out. Yeah. But the first priority was getting this cow shed working again. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And ending the animal's discomfort too. Well, that's right. Yeah. Yep. And that ends our Sector Report special from the Canterbury Plains, where the bowels of the earth exploded and turned farming families' lives upside down. I'll be back soon with another edition of Sector Report. And remember, you can catch up with us at our website, www.country99tv.co.nz. Catch you next time.